Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the American Sports Connection. I'm your host, the one and only Joey Railroads. Uh, before I bring in my special guest for this evening, don't forget, check out our social media stuff. I got to show it before I forget it at facebook.com slash American Sports Connection or on Twitter at ASC Pods, Instagram, American Sports Connection. Uh, you can find our library entire catalog on B Plus Player Radio. Best way to find them is at B Plus Radio on Twitter. And don't forget to check out our sponsors. They go on Twitter now as hashtag Weekly5, which is a squared circle magazine. The best way to find them is at TSCM Weekly. Use promo code ASCPOD and you can get 10% off your order. All right. My guest tonight is somebody that's been making the rounds, uh, taking some cool ass photographs in the wrestling world. Uh, Mr. Frankie Kurtz. Frank, how are you? Oh, what's up, man? Pretty good. Yeah, just, I'm just trying to stay cool, like with this humidity. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, tell me. I work in a I work in a shoot job as a mechanic, so today in the shop it was like eighty five degrees and hundred percent humidity. It was terrible. You probably lost like ten pounds. I wish. That'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> now, uh before we get into all your stuff with your photography, uh what were your like first memories of wrestling growing up? Um it's I don't know, man. it's it's hard to I just remember watching, like, I guess you could say the Monday Night Wars, like, just watching, like, I'd be watching Nitro, and then flip back and forth to uh, Raw, and then flip back, or Warzone at the time, I think it was called. Yeah. And, yeah, and it flipped back and forth, and, like, I remember that, like, the whole, Stone Cold had a big influence on me, it was, it was a pretty cool character, uh, also a big fan of Mick Foley. Or at the time, I guess, Mankind. So he did the whole Cactus Jack thing finally in WWF. But I, as far as what I can remember, I can remember all that stuff pretty pretty clearly. That and all the Cruiserweight stuff in WCW. But I had pictures of me as a kid watching, like, WrestleMania with my dad in diapers. But obviously, I can't remember back up. <laughs> I, um, you talk about doing the Nitro and Raw thing. What I used to do is because uh, Nitro used to be three hours back then, I would watch the first hour of Nitro, which was usually the Cruiserweights, which was really fun to watch, from like 8 to 9. And then Raw cool. would come on at 9, and I'd flip over and watch Raw from 9 to 11. And then uh, a lot of people don't remember this, but Nitro had the replay on TNT right after. So I usually either recorded it, or I just watched it right after Raw went off the air. Yeah, I didn't remember that. I, I, I feel like I probably did that too, if I, but I don't remember it. Yeah, I know, dude, it's funny. I People are like, how do you remember that? I was like, I have problems with remembering the stuff that happened like two days ago. For some reason, I can remember that like it's nothing. Yeah, in the same way. <laughs> but um, you, uh, you're into the deathmatch stuff too, like we all are. When was your... Uh, your first, like, uh, I guess you would say, jump into the pool with that stuff? Um, I mean, I've always watched, like, like I got hints, being from uh, Atlantic City, I've always got hints of here and there. Like, until, like, four years ago, I didn't really know what indie wrestling was. So all I thought was, like, I just knew there's WWF and WCW and then ECW once that was on TV. So I thought, like, that, that was it. Like my, I, I didn't have like, um, I guess, I don't know. Like I didn't know there was so much out there. But yeah, yeah I know you mean um, you didn't know there was like CZW and everything else. Right, right. Like, but um, like ECW. Like I was always drawn to like all their hardcore stuff. And I don't know. There was just something about watching someone get hit in the head with a chair or go through a table. Like, I don't know, it was cool. But um, up until I think 2016, I never, I, I didn't get to my first. Uh, that was my first indie show. 
But I, like I said, I've always been a fan of pro wrestling. But that was like my first indie show. Um, it was CCW uh, and Warhees. Um, a friend uh, through the car community by the name of Wax. Uh, obviously now I, I know that he's he was a big uh, deathmatch wrestler with CCW for a while. Um, and also a photographer. So it's kind of crazy how that worked out. But he was like, hey, man, you get to check out CCW. I said, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. He goes, well, if you're going to check it out, check out Cage Death. It's like their WrestleMania. I said, okay, I'll check it out. But um, my first show was, um, I think it was 2016. I want to say it was CCW's anniversary show. It okay. might have been Night of Infamy. I think it was Night of Infamy um, in 2016. I think that was my first, like, indie show. And then from there, I got into, like, OPW and H2O. Obviously, found H2O around the same time. And, um, yeah, just every show, we're just going, seeing people beat the hell out of each other. It's just, I don't know, it's my thing. It's cool. Yeah. Um, I always remember my first experience, and I, it wasn't necessarily deathmatch, but it was, like, hardcore wrestling, whatever you want to call it was I was, I think I was like about 11 years old, and we had these friends of ours, uh, family friends, they were into wrestling, and it was, I think it was WCW at the time, and we, you had the hot box, so we used, we went over to their house and watched the pay-per-views, and um, I think it was Spring Stampede 94, it was like Dustin Rhodes, Versus Bunkhouse Buck. And they like beat the shit out of each other. Like, um, I remember Dustin getting like a one by two busted over the side of his face. No. And it like, you remember, he used to bleed like crazy. So, yeah. like, it was on blood thinners or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I was like, what is this? This is like the, the weirdest, like, co yet coolest thing I've ever seen. But then. After that, it was like ECW came, and then you started seeing that stuff on the old like sports channel and syndicated television. And I always liked it because it was based out of Philly, so it was like an hour at the most from us. So it was always like, well, WWF is in WCW, you know, they're like the big time, but this is our shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real. It was like like deathmatch wrestling to me. Um, I relate, like, before one of my many ventures, I used to play music uh, in high school. I used to tour, and I was always into, like, metal and, like, hardcore punk and punk mm -hmm. rock and all that kind of stuff, and I used to play in a band. So the way I relate, um, like, deathmatch wrestling, it's just another genre, and I relate a lot to it because it's a lot of, like, no rules and, like, we're not going to say, we're not going to do what you say or tell us to do. So, like, I can relate to that because... I grew up with that kind of lifestyle, I guess you could say. Yeah, like, like an alternative, like, punky. Right, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not going to conform to what you say I, I have to act or how I have to act. So, like, it's really cool to be able to see that in wrestling because that's another thing that I've always loved. So it's, it's really cool. <clears throat> I always uh, equated it to, because um, I think his name's Chris Levin. He's a referee. I think he's on Impact now. He, he works to yeah. he works for GCW. He wrote yeah, Chris, uh, he's a good dude. Yeah, he wrote like a really long uh, article and piece. You can find it on his Twitter. I'll have to get it. Um, and it's about deathmatch wrestling, and he's talking about this and that, you know, and about how like when Nick Gage comes out, it's almost like it's the closest thing. In 2018, you're going to get to, like, you know, if you were going into the Coliseum. <laughs> like, in the Roman Coliseum <laughs> back in the day, where it just has this right. really, co like, cool feel to it. I said, to me, what it feels like is it's uh, all, all the kids that were, like, not popular in, like, school or, like, were kind of, like, social outcasts. And they all just kind of come together. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely see that too. It like that's just not deathmatch wrestling, but that's like indie wrestling. I think in general, oh, yeah. it just it gives you like a release from the normal like world where you can just be yourselves. And, I, and you know what? That's where I I absolutely love that about pro wrestling or indie wrestling because like 
I don't know. Like with the like like WWE and all that's like real mainstream to me. And like I said earlier, like I've been more drawn to like the underground type stuff and yeah. like the stuff that you're not you don't have to conform to a certain standard or rule or whatever. And just indie wrestling I feel like we can just go, have a good time, you know, leave all the drama at the door. Um, from time to time, unfortunately, that's not the case, but, um, <laughs> for 80% of the time, we can just usually, yeah, but usually we can just go have a good time, enjoy pro wrestling, um, mark out for the cool stuff, boot bad guy, you know, like, that's what wrestling is about, you should just go, be yourself, have a good time, meet some cool people, I mean, and generally, I've talked to so many people through indie wrestling that, um, before I started going to, like, indie shows, I probably wouldn't have talked to and it's not necessarily because of me, um, because of them, or like how they look, or how they act, or what they wear, any of that. It, it's more so like me, like the social anxiety and a lot of different kind of oh, stuff yeah. that comes into play with that. But like any wrestling, just gives it. I guess it gives me personally the confidence just to be myself, and that's what I absolutely love about it. Right. Um. I the way I explain it is, it's like it reminds me of the metal community in one sense, where it's like. You can have, it doesn't matter what, like, race, color, creed, whatever, you know, LGBT, what, whatever you are, it's like, if you're, you know, a fan, it's like, welcome to the party. Right, absolutely, and that's how it should be. I mean, not necessarily just wrestling, but that's how we should treat everyone in this world, but unfortunately, that's not the case, but it just sucks, because, you, just because, like, you look one, like one type of way or you act one type of way or you have this sexual preference or that sexual, it, none of that matters. Like at the end of the day, we're all people, we're all human beings. None of that bullshit matters. Like you're going to do what you're going to do and that's all going to be fine. But at the end of the day, we should be treating each other like we're human beings, not like, you know. No, no, I uh, absolutely agree. Um, now how did you get into the, um, photography stuff? Um, back in yeah, back in high school, I used to um, skateboard and ride BMX a lot. So, like, um, like for school, like, I took music was, like, my main focus. But I also took, like, um, video production, theater production, um, and a few other things, like website design, graphic design, that kind of stuff. I never took photography, though, like, in high school. I never did. But um, I had one project where I had to do, like, a 30-second or a minute video like a montage type video. So I just like filmed skateboarding or whatever. And then doing that, like I, I fell in love with like filming and that kind of stuff. And then eventually like my buddy was a, like, he had a camera or whatever and he was a photographer. So like, I thought it was cool because he was putting out some really cool pictures to go with the, the video I was doing. So like it just turned into, Hey, I want to learn how to take pictures so I can do that too. And then ever since then, and you're talking like 2005, um, from, then I just gradually, like, messed around with the cameras and that kind of stuff and then started really taking it seriously once I got into, like, automotive photography. Okay. I got, now, how did um, you did that, but how did um, it all come about that you decided, you know, I'm going to go full board with uh, your photography stuff you're doing, like, I guess you consider it a company on like Facebook f uh, for wrestling shows. Um, all that really came about when I was just having a like a normal conversation, and I just I started talking with uh, Lyle C. Williams, which if you don't know who Lyle is in in this area, that's that's crazy to me. But Lyle's like a living legend. Um, he's I a man. I love him. Lyle. Yeah, dude, Lyle is the man. He's he's great. I, I treat Lyle as like a mentor. He's taught me. He's been so good to me. Um, but yeah, I was just having a conversation with him one day and I was talking to him about his camera and then he asked me, he's like, Hey, well, do, do you shoot pictures? And I said, yeah, I have a camera at home and blah, 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 blah. And then long short of it is, well, are you any good? And I said, no, I, I, I don't know. Like at the time, I, I don't know what's good, what's not. Um, because I'm used to shooting cars and like, I, I shot like skateboarding, BMX and that kind of stuff. But back then I, I knew I wasn't any good, really. I was just learning, like really just learning. Um, and then I had a conversation with him at a CCW show, just, just hanging out as a fan or whatever. And then a week later we were at H2O and, uh, he's like, Hey, uh, do you have your camera? And I said, yeah, I got my camera. It's, you know, it's whatever. He goes, well, go get it. 
I need a second guy to shoot. <laughs> and then next thing you know, I shot my first show in under a week. Like, it was, it was crazy. They just threw but, you in uh, the, threw you in the deep end. Yeah, yeah. Threw in the deep end, you know. Um, I put my pictures out there. The, you know, the people that saw it liked what they saw. And um, every that, you know, been doing it ever since. And I started that, and that was in October, last October that happened. So from last October until now, um, I see myself for a lot. Um, I got my name out there, uh, and now I'm working um, with all these companies. Have good relationships with everyone I've ever shot with so far. Um, always looking to make new relationships and get my name out there more. But now I'm working for CZW, which is a company. And at the time, I, I, I didn't think I would ever be working for. It. Um, or shooting with or even having the opportunity to shoot with. And now it's a regular thing, which is pretty cool. Yeah, like a holy shit kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like sometimes when, like, any anytime I'm, like, shooting, like, a new promotion, like, um, I, because I'm still under a year as far as working in the wrestling business, so I'm, I'm pretty green. Um, so I, I kind of get nervous. Um, working with like new promotions and meeting new guys and all that kind of stuff, but that's just the whole anxiety part of it. Once I get comfortable, I'm fine. But to actually like finally get comfortable, like, that'll come with time. But. Dude, um, I, I always get nervous. I guess it's just like you, you know, it's you being human. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it's it's been awesome. Um, every opportunity I ever have, I've been super thankful for. It. And just the feedback, I'm, I'm I'm not, you know, the best photographer in the world, but I'm learning and I try to be as professional as possible. And uh, I just, you know, I learn from my mistakes and I make sure I don't make them again. And I just keep moving forward. But it's been pretty crazy. Um, everyone I've shot, every opportunity I've ever gotten to go do so far, it's been fun. Right, well, and we just talked about this off air. You have a crazy June coming up. Yeah, yeah, a crazy summer in, in total, but June is jam packed. It's all, I, it's, it's going to be a really, really fun month. Right now, now, who do you got coming up uh, that you're you're working with uh, this summer? All right, so um, I'm really excited to um, Every Wednesday, I'm shooting CCW Dojo Wars, which is fun. It's always fun. Um, all the students and the guys that come in and out, uh, and also people that are traveling around the world, um, getting opportunities to shoot all these guys, uh, is, it's an absolute pleasure. These guys are so cool, and they, they're all good to me. Um, I went as a fan to shoot Standalone Wrestling's first show, um, and now have the opportunity to work with them a few times over, over the summer, uh, this Saturday being one of their shows that they're doing a benefit for, for the Pinelands High School um, down in Little Lake Harbor Township, which I'm really excited to go and help them out with that. That's a really cool um, deal because uh, James Storm's going to be there. Yeah, that'll be cool to, to photograph James for sure. Um, I did actually have the opportunity to shoot him um, before, but unfortunately couldn't take the date uh, a few months back. But now really excited to be able to shoot him yeah and, um, and i'm trying to think what else and then you got uh tod coming up on the nine, yeah the ninth and h2o the night before the eighth yeah yeah so we get h2o um which is gonna be an awesome show always like h2o's um matt Tremont was the first person to say, hey, man, uh, go, go shoot photos or whatever. Like, he, he I guess he, you could say he gave me the start in the business or whatever, but Matt's always been um, awesome to me, and I, I, I consider Matt a, a good friend of mine, um, as well as his wife, Percy. These two have been so good to me and always uh, are encouraging and um, let me just be myself and, uh, I guess, you know, try to perfect my art. And all that. Um, and then I have CZ, yeah, T, yeah, they're cool people. I was just going to say, I couldn't agree more than they don't have to be. You know what I mean? Like, they just, they're genuinely, like, good people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're generally, like, Matt, uh, just, he, he's probably one of the most genuine people I think I've ever met. I agree. Um, 
and Chrissy's just she's she's always fun to be around. Like we went and um, they took me up. Well, technically, I took them up. I drove up to uh, Beyond uh, for New Year's Eve, and that time with them, spending that time, was something I'm always going to remember. It was, it was a really cool experience. Um, but yeah, they've always been really good to me. And then, uh, yeah. That weekend is going to be crazy, Frankie. Cause, oh, my uh, God. Because that night, the 8th is my birthday, and then the next day is TOD. So I'm just like, oh, this this is going to be one crazy birthday weekend. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. TOD is, um, like, earlier we touched on, like, I never thought I would um, shoot for CZW. Well, I absolutely never thought I would be shooting a TOD show. Um, this is actually my first TUD live as well. So my first TUD experience is also an experience I'm going to be working the show. Uh, it's blowing my mind. Yeah, I'm really excited cool. for it. That card is amazing. Every guy on there is amazing. Um, and they're hungry. And Oh, every single person on there, it, it, they're going to kill it. Every single person on there is going to kill it and they're going to blow everyone's expectations away, in my personal opinion. Um, they're all great workers. They're all great guys, and they they want it. Every single one of them want it. So it's going to be awesome to see what goes down. It, it'll be fun because I've never uh, been to one. I, I, it didn't work out last year that I couldn't go, but this year – it's going to be, it'll be fun because it's in Jersey this year. I'm so glad I don't have to drive to Delaware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. I've been hearing a lot of people say positive things that it is in Jersey. Um, I'm really excited because it's only like 15 minutes from my house. It's literally like right in the backyard. It's like five minutes from uh, the Bulldozer Collective Store in Berlin Mart. And it, it's the setting is going to be pretty cool because it's going to be like the old, uh, the CCW um at uh the fire skate zone yes so i just picture that that whole like area in like the field but it's outdoors so it'll be pretty cool i think it, it sounds like it's gonna be really awesome i can't wait yeah it's gonna be a good time i think all the fans that come out are, are really gonna actually thoroughly enjoy themselves they're gonna have a good day um and they're gonna have a lot to talk about i think yeah, now you're doing stuff as well. You had mentioned, I, I think you said you're a sponsor for the uh, Drop Kick Depression show. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually a, uh, I'm a sponsor. Um, I hit Tara Calloway up and said, hey, um, I know a lot of people with, uh, like, anxiety and depression. Um, a lot of them contemplated suicide, and that's what it benefits, uh, suicide awareness. So once I saw that, um, she was doing another uh, Born to Fight show. I absolutely knew I needed to be a part of it and help out any way I could. So I hit her up, um, got her, you know, whatever she needed for the sponsorship, and I'm really excited. I'll be up there. I'll have a table at the show with some of my prints. I'm doing um, four exclusive Dropkick Depressions like type prints for that show, uh, whatever is made or whoever buys the prints from that show, all that money is going to be donated right to um, uh, the Suicide Awareness Foundation that Tara's going to be working with. And those um, are just, they're exclusive. You're not going to be able to get them anywhere else. Right. So I am. they are going to be, uh, I guess the, the release will be at that show. Um, I will have a preview of that stuff um, at the show at Standalone, um, the book. Boardwalk Beatdown show, I'm also going to have a table at. Um, I'll have a preview there, because that's in August, at the end of August, and then her show is a couple weeks later. So all these prints, um, you can either pre-order them online, um, and then all that money goes right towards um, Tara's, uh, like the foundation that Tara's supporting. Um, I could also work it in, is if you buy a print, uh, I will sponsor seats um, for that show, so kids that generally might not have like the 20 bucks or whatever to go to the show they'll be able to go so that money could also be used for that too so it's it's either or one um but yeah i want to have four prints um for her show uh exclusively and i'm actually in the middle of working all that stuff out uh over the next couple of weeks so you guys may see some stuff coming soon for that that's that's awesome you're going to do that man so that uh you know, a kid that might not normally get to see a show, you know, will get to, 
you know, maybe go with their dad or their brother or whatever. Right. Absolutely. And if anyone wants to do that, like anyone out there listening to the podcast, if anyone wants to check that out, she has, um, or drop kick depression on their website. Um, you can go and actually, uh, sponsor receipt yourself. So if you want to go donate the money, uh, you can go actually do that as well, um, directly with that site. But, um, I just figured doing the prints would be an extra thing, um, that's exclusive to, uh, dropkick depressing. And it can also help out, um, what they're trying to do and also give a kid an opportunity to see an awesome wrestling show. So yeah, that, it, it's a win, win, win for everybody. I, I agree with that. That's, that's really cool that they're doing that. I, um, I had this conversation this weekend with all the guys, uh, I rode with when we went to, uh, Innovative Pro and Battle Club, I was like, you guys don't realize how lucky you are now. And they're like, why do you say that? I was like, when I was gr growing up, there was like the NWA New Jersey that Dennis Corluzzo used to run against ECW. And that was like the really only indie that we had yeah. in this area. And now it's just, my God, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, in New Jersey alone, um, I mean, even just South Jersey alone, uh, the whole area is so saturated with such good wrestling. Um, it, it's we're spoiled in this state. We are completely spoiled oh, because, absolutely. like, you travel to other states. Um, it, like even like I went out, when I went out to see Beyond in uh, uh, it was Worc I want to butcher this the name of this town, but I think it was like Worcester. Or, it was like right outside of Boston, Worcester, Worcester. Yes, um, there was. The, the main event was a deathmatch show with, or, or a deathmatch um, between Joey Janela and David Starr. And they did um, some pretty cool stuff and some crazy stuff. But the, the fact I'm seeing fans pop and lose their minds over like chair and table shots. Like it was amazing. The, the atmosphere was amazing. But then that really makes me feel like, like a chair shot down here in Jersey. Doesn't people will, like roll their eyes. Yeah, it, it, that's like normal. That, well, that's it's normal funny business. you mentioned that when um, they had it, the uh, Innovative Pro Show. It was um, a six man. I'm going to uh, forgive me. I don't remember all of them, but it was uh, Alex Cologne's tag team. I think it's the Knight Riders. Yeah. And um, Stockade, Raver, and Jessica Havoc were on the other side. And I don't remember the other person. F forgive me. But. Um, these people were like losing their mind because they like they went out of the ring and started fighting around and literally went outside in the street and like Alex nice. Cologne dove off of the top of a car onto like stockade and like people were going crazy and I'm like I was just like I don't know if this means I'm desensitized or if it's just I'm like okay whatever right absolutely like I've seen. Like, I get a lot of shoes, too, and, like, I'll see certain spots, and I just feel like I'm numb to it. But I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but, like, I, I feel like I'm numb to certain spots. Like, but some of the stuff is, like, it's all good. I always enjoy it. But sometimes I'm just like, eh, you know. Yeah, yeah well, it's, um, my big thing is I, I very rarely will move, and there's a buddy of mine that was there, and he goes, if you move, he says, I know to move. That's funny. Yeah, because, like, uh, I'm, I guess I'm just used to either getting hit with something or almost getting hit with something. Like, Little Man was with me. It was funny. Stockade rolled out and was fighting right in front of us the first, like, 60 seconds of the match. And he, like, booked it to the other side of the ring. No oh, man. That's it, cool. It just... I want to I get up to the next show. I heard um, through social media and the grapevine and everything that that show is – a lot of fun. Like I, yes. I saw the workers really enjoyed themselves. Um, I saw a video of, uh, I think it was Jessica Havoc and um, somebody else dancing to Shane Strickland's music as they're coming out. Was, I was it, like, it was uh, oh, and Swan. It was Swan and yep. yeah. I was like, oh look at, I was like, dude, it, I, I, I really wanted. I saw that car. I really wanted to go up, and I was just like, it just didn't work out for me that weekend. Yeah, um, but just, I'm definitely um, going to try to make out the next one. They just announced uh, their first match last night for the next show. 
it's uh, Nick Gage against Darius Carter. Oh wow, that'd be that's an interesting matchup. I know. I was like, I was like, wow. And um, at the show on Sunday, they announced Masada is going to be there. Mm, that's cool. Well, I knew we haven't he... seen him in this area in a while. Yeah, well, I know he's working. Give me a second. Uh, what? I think it's called in Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah. He's working that show the week after TOD. Okay. He's working uh, JT Dunn. All right, gotcha. So that that should be interesting. It'll be cool to see him because he's he's more out west now. Yeah, I know. I just saw a video of him in Mexico. So it's like. It'll be interesting it'll to be, see. Yeah, it'll be cool to see him back up here. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, he, he's a cool dude, man. I just wouldn't want to cross him, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a big guy. He's very intimidating, or at least he can be, you know? Yeah. Now, if people want to uh, reach you on, like, social media, because I know you... Uh, you had had some specials on uh, Facebook periodically, you know, here or there for pho photography stuff. Uh, how can they uh, contact you? Um, yeah, so Facebook um, directly, Facebook backslash, Facebook.com backslash uh, Frankie Kurtz, or you could uh, Facebook backslash, it's official Kurtz photography, is uh, the link for Facebook. Um, Instagram, it's Instagram and Twitter, both the same handle. It's at Frankie Kurtz underscore, um, or email Frankie Kurtz photo at gmail.com. Um, from, for the rest of the summer, I'm, gonna, I'm running like, um, like a portrait section. I call it mini sessions, uh, up to like half hour to an hour or whatever for like 75 bucks. And then you get a bunch of photos and, um, a lot of people have been taking the opportunity to utilize that so they can get some new fresh prints and merch for all their shows that they got coming up. Um, and I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, as far as that, I am doing a, uh, like a, so, a social media giveaway type thing. Once I hit 3000 followers on Instagram, I'll be giving away something pretty cool. Um, and always looking to do little things here and there. Um, I know that I have, also, the Boardwalk Beatdown show that St. Louis putting on, um, I'll be working that, and also I'll have a table there and uh, a giveaway. Um, as far as that, I want to do a poster size giveaway of one of the workers uh, of St. Um and that'll be like an exclusive photo just for that show, so it'll be special. Um, but that's all I pretty much got going on for me. Well, you sound like you got a busy summer, my man. Yeah, I'm trying to. Gotta stay busy. Gotta work hard and, um, yeah, work hard and be humble. That's what I always try to try to live my life like. Oh yeah, well, dude. If any, if anything, you learn from from Matt, where it's just I, I always say you're on the grind. You're always grinding. <laughs> oh yeah, it, like Matt's whole thing is uh, uh, his hustle's hardcore, and that that's not just a thing, man. That's that's how you go live that's your life. Like, that's a shoot. That's that's a shoot for sure. So, um, just seeing, like, as far as the wrestling business goes, seeing how um, to conduct yourself, um, whether you're, you're at a show, doing a shoot, or even on social media, you got to make sure that, you know, you're the most professional that you can be because um, it travels fast. So, that's it, all. I, I, I know what to do, what not to do, and yeah. I just try to do my best. I It just amazes me, though, that that has to be, like, told to some people you know and like that should be not just like a wrestling deal that should be like you should live your life like that you know what i mean yeah well like i said earlier like people want to act a certain way and people want to treat other people a certain way oh, and definitely. realistically at the, at the end of the day we're all humans and we should be treating each other how we would like to be treated um i've never met someone that wanted to be treated like crap so why should you treat someone else like that um, even a worker or something like that, like there's a fine line there in, in my opinion. Um, but you know, I don't want to get into like any negative stuff. No, but, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I know. I just try not to be negative, but 
at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we should treat each other the way that we want to be treated with, you know, respect, no matter who it is. If it's, you know, a guy that's never worked a show a day in his life or a student to a legend that's been around for 50 years, you should treat everybody the same way. So I try to treat everyone, like, I don't get starstruck like I used to when I was younger. Um, and I just treat everyone like they're a human being. You're just, you're another person. You bleed the same color I bleed, and you breathe the same air I'm breathing. So, Damn right. But on that note, yeah. we're going to get out of here. So don't right. forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up, all that stuff. And we'll see you back next time. Have a good night, everybody.